Well, there you're watching the polls on the Joy News channel, and it's six days to the Joy News National Dialogue on Illegal Mining, which is coming up next Monday. Do make a date, but uh, on the polls this afternoon, the Speaker of Parliament is giving a green light for the Trade Minister to lay his legislative instrument restricting the importation of some 22 products, including rice and poultry. We hear from the Minister's uh, office as he strongly defends his decision to impose these restrictions. No, the ministers responsible, particularly Agric. There's, uh, we, there has been quite a lot of liaison between our ministry and Agric ministry before we came out uh, with this. Uh, we, we thought through. And this afternoon as well, uh, we hear from the finance minister, Ken Oferreta, who's uh, wading into the controversial government policy. Also this afternoon, the Trade Advocacy Group is amongst uh, the growing uh, number of individuals and groups opposing the proposal. They'll be uh, on the show sharing their thoughts on this controversial import restriction uh, line. Also hard drugs taking over Africa with uh, more than half of all marijuana and other drugs being consumed in Ghana and in other West African countries. Marijuana is the most abused illicit drug and this is no news because it has been so. But one thing that this report has come out with is the diversion of people from incarceration to drug treatment. Hey, that's uh, as we speak to the uh, ECOWAS Drug Prevention and Control Office, which is stepping up uh, moves to clamp down on drug trafficking. And we're also announcing to you that you need to be prepared to pay more to acquire a Ghanaian passport as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is beginning engagements on an upward adjustment of this travel document. Also, we are updating our passport from the biometric to the chip embedded. So the chip embedded is going to cost more. And if you continue sitting at the eight dollars, we will continue to have the problems that we are having at the passport office. More from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration as we hear the views also of some Ghanaians uh, sharing their thoughts about frustrations uh, and also the cost of acquiring a passport. These and more coming away here on The Pulse. The Pulse as always brought to you by Global Communities Digni Lua for Double Safe Sanitation. Don't forget that uh, we're on Facebook, YouTube and at myjoyonline.com. I am blessed to join you as independent, fearless and credible. Welcome to The Pulse. We'll give you details after this. Well, let's start off from Parliament, where Speaker Alban Bagwin is giving the green light now to Trade and Industry Minister Katie Hammond to lay before the House on Thursday the controversial airline seeking to restrict the importation of some 22 selected items. The minority actually imposed, uh, uh, and as we know it, uh, had raised concerns about this airline, indicating that it might become a breeding ground for chronism and corruption. Uh, we'll take you to live to Parliament shortly, uh, but first, though, let's listen to Katie Amon speak exclusively to Joy News throughout the whole of yesterday, justifying this very error. We are not banning. No, restricting. We're restricting, yes. but we're restricting to the extent that we don't create farming in the country. How do you propose so, to do that? Well, exactly. So you see the committee that has been put together, agriculture ministry, uh, ministry, how many of them? Um, you got a you copy have, of You have the ministry, you have the ministry of agriculture, you have the finance ministry, you have the GRA, you no. have... The food and, uh, so food and uh, whatever, uh, what do you call it, FDA? Yes. They, they are all there. Go to the pig. They are all there. Including the, 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 the associations like so AGI? All of them. All of them. And so there is this committee that meets and monitors food production in the country. So it's not a simple question of just um, sitting down one afternoon and determine that you can get a certificate or permit or not. No. The ministry is responsible, particularly Agri. Uh, there has been quite a lot of liaison between our ministry and Agri ministry before we came out uh, with this. Uh, we, we thought through. Um, if in the end, uh, the committee through the Agri ministry tells us that uh, the, there's a deficit, the deficit between the production and consumption in the country is this much. So this much has to be imported. It will be allowed through. It's as simple as that. 
So you, what, what you're saying is you would allow imports yes. so far as it doesn't create shortage locally? Absolutely. And of course, so far as also doesn't flood uh, the, the, the system. So to the extent that there will be starvation in the country, we would ensure that the right quantity is allowed into the country. What we would not do, and repeatedly I'm making this point, is to simply get up and uh, arbitrarily suggest that well, we restricted the import of this, we have restricted. You might well say that the word uh, restriction is a misnomer, and uh, you, might, you might be right in saying that, because it doesn't seem to me that uh, right from the word go, we're going to restrict the extent that you, you may be tempted to equate uh, restriction to banning, but that won't be entirely accurate. We will be restricting, not in the context of banning, but restricting in the context of keeping an eye on it and uh, making sure that at the same time uh, the production at home is beginning to match our consumption. At a point when there is uh, equilibrium somewhere, uh, then uh, the system will be looking at whether there is a need to continue with the importation. Well, uh, the trade minister also added that minority stabbed him in the back because he consulted the caucus before proceeding to raise the proposed ally on the floor. The point is? My point is this. It was on the strength of this that I proceeded to lay the document the day after. But we've heard the minority leader say that they opposed... That's what I call duplicity. This is the committee that I was compelled contrary to the demands of the regulations, uh, demands of the constitution and the standing orders, to go before, to explain myself. And this is the report to the minority leadership. And then they come back to tell me that, well, they don't know about it and uh, whatever. This, this was the 22nd of this November. This is the 22nd. On Friday, yes. was there another meeting where further proposals were so made? So following them? this, following this, uh, was there any other with the committee? The committee following this was done, expert, they done their work. So the leadership of the minority side, they kind of in a whispering conversation said that, well, I can't tell you everything. We are colleagues, you know, so a lot of things that, uh, it's, you get upset when in the end of the day you think they're stabbing you in the back, and then you get- Have you been stabbed in the back? I think so. How? I think, well, I mean, you can understand stand from what I've just been speaking so the about. Of particularly, the yes, particularly based on what I've just read to you. I mean, I wasn't going to go anywhere before any pre laid committee because I've made a point it's not mandated but, but by any constitution. To, to subsequent this, to this, on Friday morning, it was a meeting. But yeah. there, wasn't a, there wasn't a meeting with a committee. Okay. It was a meeting among the leaders. My leader, Sir Chief Minister Bunsu, took it up on himself to have a discussion with the, the minority leadership and a few of them. They called me behind the lobbies, uh, the division, uh, you know the division when we go through yes. this. And, uh, what is it that we can do? What is it? Make proposition. What is it? Uh, I am bound to lay this thing. Uh, we take you now to Parliament. Kukwe Sante is monitoring uh, the developments ever since uh, this whole controversy started. And Kukwe, uh, of course, the question as to the Speaker, uh, was he really clear uh, what the constitutional provisions were? Uh, and why is he now allowing the airline to be laid on the floor? Tell us more. Bless that. The Speaker's argument is that the Constitution, al uh, the constitution allows ministers to lay instruments in Parliament. What the constitution says is that if parliament does not like the ally, they can by two thirds majority annul that CI. And so once the CI or ally or any instrument clearly goes by the dictates of the constitution and does not infringe on the parent law, then parliament cannot do anything in terms of restricting its lay. And so as we speak, what the speaker has directed is that there should be another meeting between KT Hammond and the subsidiary legislation committee to incorporate all the amendments that have been made to cross the T's and dot the I's and make sure that it's in conformity with the Parent Act and also with the Constitution of Ghana. Once that is done, there is nothing that stops the minister from laying that on the floor. And that has been the argument of the speaker. And so he, he in fact, said that should be laid tomorrow. It was the majority that who got up and said because of a few issues, they believe they want to do it on Thursday. And the speaker said, okay, we want to do it on Thursday, then so be it. And so the speaker's argument 
goes with what Kate Yamon has always been making. And if you look at the Constitution, as Minister of State, he is clothed with the constitutional powers to put forth this legislative instrument, this proposed regulation, to regulate the imputation of the restricted goods that he has put in this ally, and nothing can stop him. Once it is laid on Thursday, in 21 16 days, it will become law. If you look at from now to when Parliament is expected to go and break on the 22nd of December, that would not be enough days for the 21 16 days. And so we would expect that Parliament would have to now sit maybe one or two or three Saturdays or even Sundays to be able to get the 21 16 days for this ally to mature into law before Parliament goes on break in December. Uh, I see. Uh, and now KT Hammond has been asked to also meet the subsidiary legislation committee. W what will happen there, uh, knowing that, of course, uh, this airline was almost being laid on the floor? So the, this, this meeting with the subsidiary legislation committee is to go through the records, the proposed amendments that have been made by the majority leader himself, as well as leadership on the minority side, make sure that it finds expression in the legislative instrument which will be laid on the floor on Thursday. I see. Uh, and uh, in terms and of... The minorities yeah. had an interview with the deputy on Chilida. The deputy, um, the deputy minority in the Imam Lama Kutubwa, who is promising that their side don't want to have anything to do with this ally and they are going to oppose it every step of the way. The only challenge is they do not have the numbers. When it comes down to a vote, to third majority to vote to approve this right? the minority that is just about half of all MPs. They will need at least a, a, they will need at least half of the majority MPs to join them to make up to the third parliament to annul this ally. And they are not likely to get it. So far we haven't heard from the majority MPs individually as whether they support this or not. This has become such a battle between the minority as a bloc and KT Hammond, as well as the leadership of the majority. But it's not clear if the a minority will get any votes if it comes down to it from the majority to annul this ally. So once we get this ally laid on Thursday and Parliament is able to get 21, 16 days, the expectation is that this will mature into law and it will come into effect. You see, that part of the, that's part of the opposition of Ruta and several key stakeholders who say this is complete bad law which must not be made to stand. Mm, I see. The quick question is there. We know that uh, there have also been uh, some amendments. Uh, as, um, of course, the Trade Minister, Katie Hammond, says you could uh, seek redress in court if the minister, for instance, under this ally, turns down your request to import a, pro a product. I, I want us to listen to that uh, aspect of the conversation just to uh, bring into sharp focus, you know, the context about corruption and what the minority has been saying about cronyism, the minister has been responding. I didn't quite understand that at this level, I mean, when uh, the LI, the law, this decision, regula regulation were made on the back of a substantive act that has been through parliament, the minister could do A, B, C, D. The minister has prepared a document in which he has made reference, or uh, made provisions for a redress in the high court. Parliament doesn't sit in adjudicative capacity. But you agree to that? Well, ultimately, petition. because they were all over the place, but I made the point, I insisted that it didn't make sense. But you agree to well, that? Well, I agreed to that. But where, where, took it, well, mm -hmm. I where took is it in the to, document? You see, the government's lawyer, the uh, India most government lawyer, is the attorney general. And so I can show you the, the, the again, if you give me one second, is there in the writing? Have you seen that? Is in the manuscript? Is it? No, that is uh, there's something that has. Uh, no. Uh, and at this moment, we're, we're looking for the Attorney General. Yeah, no, it's not Attorney General. I was looking at the, the writing, the insertion on this document. Mm -hmm. There is there an insertion on this document. You know? No, no, that's not it. Mm -hmm. But, but, but what, so, so, what, what, so, yeah, what, so what, what are you looking for there? What, what, so one of these, it was an insertion in the manuscript, uh, or the, 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 the actual phraseology mm -hmm. of what was wanted. What was then demanded uh, between uh, uh, two the leadership, uh, my side and then the other side? Yeah. So the two leadership you, agreed, which yeah, is that, what you said. That, that ultimately there must be recourse to parliament. parliament. Yeah, parliament, for well, whatever reason mm. they thought. Which uh, you agreed. Was, which well, agreed I agreed. To. You see, I keep saying that I agreed, but I was with you, it didn't make sense. I knew it wasn't going to fly mm. with the attorney general. You answered the question, so what happened after your agreement? So I took it because they said the attorney general should look at it. 
And what I mean, I'm not going to just put anything the attorney general hadn't seen. I took it to the attorney general's with a lawyer from this office, and the attorney general's office was a uh, no way, Jose. It doesn't work like that. I was so he's not going to find expression it, in the document. So the final one that I've given you is what, what I've just read. Yes, yeah, what you read. It, it, ends, it ends with the courts. It ends with the courts. As we know it, some interest groups are challenging uh, this um, uh, ally, as we know it. One of them is the Traders uh, Advocacy Group, Ghana. Uh, and uh, Nana Poku is the General Secretary of the group, joining us in the studio. Uh, so thank you for uh, spending some time with us. So uh, there's a uh, leeway now for the Minister to go ahead and to lay this before Parliament. Um, that will definitely mean that you'd have to, one way or the other, brace for this policy change. What else is left to you in terms of options. Thank you for having us here this afternoon. In fact, it's quite unfortunate that um, the minister is rushing. There is no need to rush into this because to push this through LI means a lot of um, difficulties for the ruling government. We are not saying that we don't need it. We need it, but the timing is wrong. We would have wished that um, a lot of engagement is done for um, common understanding achieved before this airline you know, could put through. But for, uh, it, it's, it's as if there is a hidden um, agenda the minister is pushing. But we are urging him to slow down, else it is going to push them off power. As for that one, we can assure them. Because um, he is saying per yesterday's interview that um, your colleague conducted that um, all um, proper, you know, um, arrangement is put in place for the ally to be put, you know, to push through. But if you come to the grounds, we are not seeing it like that. It isn't happening. And even the, 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 the formation of the committee that he has formed, is completely wrong. Because how can you put an industry player like um, AGI, who have over the years a long-standing opposing import into the country, on such committee? All that we are saying is um, a collective technical people should form the committee. People who can easily give the minister... You're doubting the competence of the AGI now? Is that what you're doing? No. No. We, 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 we are, they, they are game players. All right? They are also into production and so forth and so on. This is for imports. So you don't need them there. That's why I'm asking the question. You doubt their competency or you are not um, I you know, seeing eye to eye with them, a reason I for which you want them simply the, off I the committee? They, 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 they can be impartial. The government explains that the, you know, the reason for which they're running this policy is to empower local producers. We how agree. then do you take out AGI in the equation? We, we, we agree. So how do you take AGI Look, out of the this equation? This is for import, not manufacturing. But it's, argument, for, it's for the entire policy. Yes. The effect of the policy the, is to book, boost argument, local capacity. The, the How do so you take AGI straight. out of that equation? Sir? Look, this is for importers. AGI doesn't import. Yeah, but okay? the bill, Look, the, you, the you, end you, result you, of the you bill... You agree that they don't import. The end result of the bill, as government is explaining now, is to boost local production. That is where they are going... How out. do you boost production without AGI? No. You boost production, it has its own session. Yes, but the end this game of this ally, the, this the end game of the ally is to, of course, make the environment much more fairly Why? competitive we don't, for, we don't, for local we, producers and to boost local production. We don't how do you disagree. take How do we you take disagree. AGI out of the equation, sir? It's possible because we need people who can easily give the minister proper statistics of the needed imports that the country needs than putting AGI. AGI what? has a, a database. AGI has a data. And I'm not holding, you know, they don't. For, for AGI. They, they don't. AGI has a database of all local producers. They would be able to tell the capacity of the country in terms of 
where we lack and how we can produce. You ha- how you, do you, you take you, them out? You, of you the also have a point, but they are at the same time. No, going it's to not pose, my point. It's uh, probably the no, reason. They are at the there. same mm-hmm. time going to pose difficult in certain aspect of importation. It's just not you're, right now, you're, you're they, simply they, prejudicing the association. Simply yes, because they it's are not only producers. them. It's mm-hmm. not only them. Mm-hmm. I want all we traders advocacy group Ghana would want to see a technical team put together. Not industry players who, at the end of the day, is going to give difficulty at the meeting. Do you have trade unions in there? Definitely. Do you there have, some, do you have there some in there? There are some in there. These, are, these are other sectors that are fairly represented. All so, that so we make are a saying, case, all that we and the minister then decides. Put technical people on the me on the on the, the AGI is not technical. Oh, I would I would say they will oppose certain things that they lack capacity of producing. Look, there was an instance Mm -hmm. that a biscuit importer placed an order with a Ghanaian-owned company to produce for her a certain amount of um, 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 quantity. They couldn't. They returned her money back to her. So in this case, how do you handle this? You see... It's a one-off, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's not. It's not the one. We don't have the time, and I don't want to go through it. Mm. All that we are saying is, the timing is wrong. Mm. It needs more time, so that we can actually do away with all the, you know, the, the, the things that will not make the whole okay. thing. Let's look at alternatives uh, because that's not been part of the debate ever since it came up. Yeah, because we, 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 we haven't started yet. Yeah, yeah, we are now we're still, it's good we're having the yes. conversation well, now. We, as, as I'm coming, I'm coming from Minister of Trade. I get that. I we get have that. actually placed what, a petition before what, the minister what is, to take a look we'll, we'll into look at the, the petition. committee. That, that's fine, and, and I'm yeah. grateful you're raising that petition. Yeah. What's the alternative? And if, if it is contained in the petition you've submitted to the minister, just share that with us. Aside having this airline to check all of the problems that the minister has listed, how can we achieve these same things? Look, with the same effect, without this it airline. It depends on the preparation that the government has actually laid. All right, you are putting restrictions on certain items. Do you have it in abundance? That is number one. If you don't have it, you know the chaos that you're going to create. Let's talk about the alternatives. The alternative is for us to produce as many as we can so that we can export. So but if you produce, have, then you check imports. We don't, yes, mm-hmm. we agree. We, we don't actually uh, against the moment, no. What we are against is the, is, is the formation of the committee and the timing. Okay, uh, now the speaker is giving a clear uh, timeline. Thursday it will be late. Uh, if it goes ahead, it's passed. No, what, we've, what, also what sent, we've also sent petitions. Uh, yes, you just told, you've just the, told me about the, the petition. The, the speaker as well. Uh, yes, but the petition uh, now will be redone, and knowing that the speaker has ruled, is giving leeway to the minister to, to table before the House. On the Thursday. Airline. Yes. What's likely to happen if that passes? Look, we, we, we have nothing to lose. We are importers, mm-hmm. we are traders. We have nothing to lose. Those that lose something that will go against is those who are holding on to power. And if tomorrow you don't you're, have you're that power... blackmailing governments. No. Uh, it's a political we decision. We will not. The government says... We will not. It's, it's, it's a political suicide. If they don't know. If they so wish, go ahead. Okay, so what you mean to say... We is don't have any you, issues. You, you all vote and block against the government if they go ahead with the policy. That's your You opinion. see, we live in a country whereby politicians think Ghanaians are still living like yesterday. Ghanaians are well abreast with the situation on the ground now more than ever. So anything they are doing today will have the ripple effect tomorrow. So if... They are not looking at their shoulders. They should start looking. I see. Yes. D- did you engage the trade minister? Um, and what's been the feedback? In fact, he himself did not engage anybody. He was just... Yesterday, you saw it. He yeah, was but, just... But he read a message. You know, 
put out evidence of no, engagement no, 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 with his no, no. colleagues it, in it, Parliament. It's, it's a complete You're not a member of Parliament, are you? No, it's a complete lie. You're not a member Look, of Parliament. the man you? should be up and I know his kind. Yeah, but Katie, you, we can't, Katie, I mean, just to be fair Katie to him, you, you, his yeah, way yeah, but just through, to be fair, just know, to be fair to the he's minister, very, very you, you were not there in Parliament, he's put out his evidence, the minority has not disputed that. You know what? You should pray that this uh, ally go through, because those who are against the ally, we are many. Including the MPs? Timing. Including MPs? I'm telling you, the timing is very wrong. We, we are not completely rejecting the ally. It's a very good thing for the country. But please, the, the sh it's like the, the, what do you call it, the mobile phone, um, it has a name. The ones that when you send money, you know, the mobile phone, something, something, that came to being, you know. Look at how it has ended. Yeah, the E-Levy. The right. E-Levy. <laughs> this is going to happen to this. And this one is catastrophic. For the government. Yeah, why are you worried about the government? That should be their business. They are the ones in power. They you see, the I am, I am, I am. Are you a member of the MPP? No. Are you worried for I am party? worried because they are doing wrong things at the same time at the wrong times. Mm. That is what this government seeks to achieve. You see, if there is a new government, I'm happy. You understand? Maybe that new government could remove this and make sure proper structures are placed before Ghanaians, okay. before, you know. So, so what's your membership like? Uh, give us a sense. And w what are your members you know, are going good. to do now if, if that's the market in which you would now have to yeah. operate? Traders what, what will happen to the consumer? Today's advocacy group, mm -hmm. Ghana, is scattered around all the 16 regions okay. in Ghana. We are the first group of traders that have been able to put all traders on a database. I see. If you go to our website, everything is there. If I'm looking for the seller who sells, let's say, um, cloth, at a click of a button, I know where that seller is. I, I know that importer. So definitely we are a mouthpiece for traders who are importing. Mm -hmm. And if you ask Asaki Awingobet, the importers and um, um, exporters um, association of Ghana, he will tell you, we are the most well-arranged organization in the country. And if you are about to do something of this sort and you don't consult and you just go ahead and do it, at the end of the day, it doesn't bring the effect that you are looking for. So that will be the, 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 the whole situation. But let's see on Thursday how it plays. But we are anticipating a very serious trouble um, 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 in, 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 in a bit of getting this thing through. Okay, uh, let's look at your next line of action. Uh, to what extent do you intensify this? Oh, for us, we, 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 we can't do much because you can't fight government on the day. You understand? Right. But we also have a way of getting our traders, you know, um, aligned with certain things that at the end of the day to be um, detrimental to those who are going to buy our items that we bring from outside. Mm. Yes. Okay, uh, we'll have to end it here, uh, but of course uh, we'll wait to see what the outcome will be. Any final message to government? Perhaps uh, the minority has been calling on the president to intervene. All it's that we are happen. saying, all that we are saying is that take your time, don't rush into it, take the e-levy um, um, situation as a case study and make sure that at the end of the day, everyone is on board and we understand the concept that you are bringing. So today, we are confused. Okay, uh, Nana Poku, thank you for spending some time with us. And uh, Trade thank Advocacy you, Group says they will continue to mount pressure on government to withdraw the airline. Uh, but we uh, look at some other stories trending this afternoon as the uh, country, Ghana, and other West African nations are also drenched in hard drugs, including cannabis, opioids, and also cocaine, as well as tramadol and alcohol. That's according to regional grouping Equus. Uh, more than half of all those using those drugs are found to be the youth, mostly students. And now 22% of those who consume the drugs are unemployed. That's more for you.
Uh, and of course, what you see on the screens now uh, is uh, the number of uh, drug users across uh, the continent and also the projections that we have uh, uh, looking at, uh, for instance, North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, Asia, uh, Oceania as well uh, there. And you see the trend of where we, we are placed in terms of uh, the illicit use uh, of drugs as well. And of course, programs officer at the division. Uh, f first, uh, of course, we'll be uh, giving you a breakdown as you see it here. West Africa accounting for more than half, 56% of drug users. Uh, and there is also more uh, being revealed in this uh, very document, a report that has been released. The Director General of the Narcotics Control Commission, uh, Kenneth uh, Edu Amalfo, uh, is uh, also calling uh, for a concerted approach from a course member states to tackle the problem. It is incumbent upon us all to utilize this knowledge to enhance our preventive measures, strengthen our enforcement, and implement targeted interventions to address the root causes of drug-related issues. Ghana appreciates and understands the enormous national security challenges posed by illicit drug trafficking on its nationals and that of member states. Ghana will therefore continue to work closely with other member states in protecting our borders, citizens, and more importantly, our youth who are our human capital. I would like to take this opportunity to urge everyone in West Africa, and by extension the African continent, to take the issue of illicit drug abuse and its related vices very seriously. As partners in addressing the global drug addiction problem, this occasion will also serve to encourage member states to routinely report on their country's drug situation as required by the ECOWAS Regional Drug Action Plan. As the report seeks to highlight the most recent estimates and trends in drug abuse and drug supply, as well as trafficking in substandard spurious, falsified, and counterfeit medical products in West Africa, I will urge member states to put policies in place to build, strengthen, and redefine the operations of all national drug law enforcement agencies to carry out their mandate effectively and impartially. I would like to reiterate that Ghana, through the Narcotics Control Commission, is committed to all relevant conventions and regulations aimed at combating the illicit drug use and trafficking. It is important that member states reaffirm their continuous collaboration with all existing key stakeholders, both within and outside the sub-region, aimed at tackling the illicit drug abuse trend, which is grossly affecting the youth across. Today's lunch marks not only the dissemination of information, but also a call to action. As we delve into the findings of the report, let us collectively pledge to foster regional cooperation, share best practices, and implement evidence-based policies to create a safer and healthier West Africa. And now the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration is making a case for an upward adjustment of uh, price for passport applications. The Ministry argues that the cost of travel uh, documents uh, has been heavily subsidized. Uh, hence, uh, the inability of government and the passport office to invest in other areas of uh, service delivery. Currently, a citizen pays an average of some $8 for an ordinary passport as compared to the second least paying country in the West Africa sub-region, which is Liberia, paying an average cost of $40. Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister Amprachum Sapon says engagement will soon begin in Parliament to push for price ad adjustments and has also been touching on some of the reforms targeted at improving service delivery. Until we get, as you mentioned, the full complement of the equipment the computers and the giant printers uh, will continue to have problems. No two ways. Until we are ready to invest 
we will continue to have problems. Until we are ready to pay the realistic fees for passports, we will have problems. Otherwise, the little resources that we get, we will continue subsidizing the passport. Eight dollars. Liberia is doing biometric for forty dollars. And Togo, yes. Forty dollars. Supplied by the same supplier who supplies us with the passports. Liberia charges for them. We charge eight dollars. Meaning we are having to subsidize every passport. So the money to buy the printers is being used to subsidize the passport for Kumenu. Until Kokumenu is prepared to pay the realistic passport fees, we will continue to have these problems. And also, we are thinking of upgrading our passport from the biometric to the chip embedded. So the chip embedded is going to cost more. And if we continue sitting at the $8, we will continue to have the problems that we are having at the passport office. No magic can be done by the officers over there. So we have to brace ourselves. Reduction in overcrowding at the rich headquarters. In order to reduce overcrowding at the head office, access to the public has been drastically limited. Only passport applicants who have genuine reasons to be at the passport headquarters are allowed access to the office. Installation of automated access controls. Additionally, Automated access controls have been installed at entrances to all offices. All offices have been issued with access cards without which one cannot enter the building. The rich head office as a security zone is only available to VIPs and emergency cases, that is medical, educational, or official purposes. To further improve security at the passport offices, CCTV cameras have been installed in the offices at the head office. This is to monitor the activities of officers and to ensure that officers are actively working to achieve set targets. Plans are also underway to extend installation of CCTVs in the other passport application centers. All members of staff in all the passport application centers, including the headquarters, have been issued with name tags for purpose of easy identification. <coughs> passport application centers. The ministry has made major strides in passport administration. It has maintained 14 printing hubs in our missions abroad and also secure pieces of land for the construction of passport application centers in Accra, Kumasi, and Tamale. The ministry currently operates 13 passport application centers in Ghana, namely Accra Park, Accra Premium Park, Tema Park, Ho Park, Cape Coast Park, Takwade Park, Ophorodia Park, Kumasi Park, Kumasi Premium Park, Sunyane Park, Tamale Park, Tamale Premium Park, and Wa Park. The ministry has plans to extend its passport service to the remaining regions of the country with our parks. Uh, so there you heard it uh, from the minister, but are Ghanaians willing to pay more? Uh, well, I'll be bringing in shortly Rasmu Barak, who is a former member of parliament for Kungungu, who is also uh, joining the conversation uh, this afternoon. Thank you so much, sir, for spending uh, some time with us here on the polls. But uh, I want you to first listen uh, to some Ghanaians and their thoughts on this whole uh, proposition to have you know, an, an airport adjustment of uh, you know, the service fees for passport application. Let's listen. If the government has thought of increasing passport application, I have no much problem about that. Provided they are going to provide the necessary machines, logistics, that will process the application so that we don't have a lot of backlog. That may, people go through the backlog and pay a huge sum of money to, to, be, to get the passport. Um, already there is hardship in the system. And since there is hardship things need to be reduced for the citizens to feel better but looking at it now what business are they standing on to increase it they said there is short of materials the government is spending money on certain things that 
shouldn't have been done, to my um, opinion, which they need to rather invest those monies into the materials, procurement of those materials. But now he is going, coming to add more suffering to the suffering we are in now. So I, I absolutely don't agree with the government. The government increasing prices, I don't think I have a problem with that because me standing here, if I want to travel, I don't, I don't care. Wherever I'll get the money and travel, I'll go because fine, maybe Ghana is not helping me or wherever I'm going, wherever I'm going, that is where I'm going to make something best out of my life, you understand? So fine, food prices are up, a lot of things are up. So when uh, in the passport office or wherever, when they want to skyrocket prices, I don't care. I'm okay with it because if you really want to travel and you need a passport, they are just definitely going to find a way out to make sure you get it. So I think it's cool with me. If they increase it, then it would be like it, will, it wouldn't affect us in the terms of like collection. You know, me like this, I've applied, I've applied for like since January, but I still I don't know. I've gone for verification and other stuff, but still I haven't had any news from them. If they like they will increase, then it would be. Like it will affect us positively, positively to like it will be okay. Okay, so good time to hear from uh, Rasm Barak, who's joining the conversation now. Uh, very interesting thoughts there, knowing that even some Ghanaians say they are determined to leave this country. Uh, initially, of course, and this is not um, the aim of government, but but some experts feel that this will also check the high level of migration, worker migration that we're experiencing in the country, but people are simply determined to go in for the passports. First of all, what's your thoughts on this high demand for this travel document? Well, I mean, um, there are serious challenges in the country, uh, for which reason, you know, people are desperate, you know, uh, to leave the shores of the country because they feel a great sense of um, hopelessness. You know, we have a um, rising cost of living, rising um, youth employment, you know, or unemployment in the country. And um, this accounts for, you know, people's desperation to um, leave the country. But if you have a situation like that, obviously there should be uh, creative ways of, you know, uh, solving some of these um, challenges that have been brought on, you know, as a result of uh, government's own uh, failings. Uh, First of all, being a citizen of a country should come with some set of benefits. I mean, I heard the deputy uh, minister um, argue that Liberia pays more. And indeed, I've looked at the um, um, numbers for not just West Africa, but for East Africa. If you look at Kenya, for instance, they are paying about um, $40 for passport, whereas we are paying um, about $10 for uh, a passport. But as I said, there should be benefits that come with being a citizen of a country. We are not Liberia. Ghana has more resources, you know, um, than Liberia. And so you can't compare yourself, you know, uh, with all of your resources to a country that does not have half of the um, resources that you have. I see. But when Secondly, you look at, but, but when you, I'm sorry for cutting through, but when you look at the kind of service delivery we're getting, Possibly the would, challenge should be coming would, from, would, from the highly subsidized cost, isn't it? I would, I would, I would come to um, the service delivery. Mm. I mean, um, I know officers of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are working tirelessly, especially um, those in the uh, passport office, you know, under strenuous circumstances. I know for a fact that uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is one of the underfunded, you know, uh, ministries, if you look at the budgets and the sort of things that they do compared with um, other ministries around the world, you know. But at a time when, you know, um, the country is bankrupt, we need to be very, very creative. There are a lot of um, government houses across the country, you know, district assemblies. I don't see why government, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, should be seeking resources to build newer passport centers when, you know, they could leverage on available facilities, you know, uh, in place like the regional administrations, the district offices. And, and, and the, 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 the view would be to reducing the pressure and stress on Accra. This is not rocket science. If you go to some of the uh, most advanced countries, it can be in your county, you know, or in your borough, 
and apply for a passport, you know, and you don't have to go to a regional center to get a passport. So there are district offices up and down the country, and the time has come for us to be creative mm. under these circumstances that we we, we are facing. Okay, Let, let's are, look at the possibility of what uh, an average Ghanaian can take at this time, because the reality is, and, and I'm glad you're also uh, acceding to that, that we have a subsidized, a highly subsidized cost as compared to East Africa and even here in the West Africa SAMP region. So how much can an average Ghanaian take now in terms of a possible upward adjustment? Because the conversations will start soon in Parliament. Well, I mean, look, uh, we are approaching Christmas, um, and soon after Christmas, uh, kids will be back in school. You know, uh, parents will be hard done, will be hard pressed to come up with um, resources to pay school fees and meet with the uh, daily challenges that they are faced with. So, it is not a good time to be increasing prices of anything in the country. That is the first point, especially judging by the fact that embassies are also increasing their visa fees judging by the fact that data is becoming more and more expensive you know to apply for a Ghanaian passport you would have to um, initiate your application online data is expensive so all of this adds up to you know uh, the pressure on the on the ordinary Ghanaian and I think it will be a bit insensitive you know uh, to increase prices of passports at this particular moment. Uh, the fee, make, the, the, yeah, okay, one, just go ahead. One, yes. one, one more point. Yeah. Now, the, there are 13 passport centers in the country. Averagely, they do about uh, 300 passports per day, right? Now, this brings us to the talk about a 24-hour economy. I mean, if people are in waiting line, because they, the challenge with acquiring passport is not just the application. But getting a date, you know, to go and do your biometric. Mm -hmm. And people are not getting the date because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is running a quota system. They are doing 300 passports per day at point A. So once they reach 300 passports per day, they don't do, you know, anything beyond that. I mean, you could run um, um, an eight hour shift, you know, where some people could work in the evening, you know, just so that you reduce you know the pressure on the passport office but all of this pressure from ordinary Ghanaians to acquire passports and travel has come about as a result of increasing cost of living in the country and that's a reality mm. uh, the concerns about the high levels of migration we're seeing especially health worker migration uh, in the last few days the feeling is this could also be a tool to check that. We're not saying that's the intention of the ministry, but it might be an opportune time to increase the cost, lower the demand, and we have some more brains working in this country. Is that far-fetched? They, they, they haven't said that, you know, and if that is the reason... <laughs> yeah, they, they, they won't say that. They would never say that. No one that would out, ever say that. Put that out in the, in the public. But yeah. I would expect that um, we incentivize, you know, uh, people who are working in the country. Because everyone is working under extreme conditions, except for people in certain categories. I'll give you a typical example about Malawi. Mm. The Malawian president has banned himself, his cabinet, government ministers, you know, district assembly, um, chief executive officers, from traveling out of the country for the next three months. You know how much savings in millions of dollars that would, you know, accrue to government? A lot of savings. So... If we don't have resources, you know, to acquire more material, to print booklets for applicants, we need to look at some of the, the, the extravagance, you know, that we have become so accustomed to as a country, mm -hmm. you know, and I am strongly of the view that they are not being creative enough because I don't see why there should be regional offices, government offices, district offices, and yet government would be looking for newer funds mm. to build okay. newer um, uh, passport offices, you know, which would come at greater cost to the ordinary Ghanaian. Yeah, and I want us to wrap up on the point about middlemen, Goro boys, as they are referred to. Uh, they they mm. never seem to go away. Ingenuity or not, innovation or not, these guys are still in the system. Is it time to mainstream them or perhaps just try and frame another... And you know, activity we, around around the around what they do and, and you know streamline it. We have gone biometric. We've gone digital. Mm. You know, 
since I think 20, um, 2014 or so. Yet still, these Goro boys or middlemen are not going away. They are not going away because of the challenges that ordinary applicants are facing. It will surprise you to know that um, when one tries to apply for a passport, sometimes they don't get may have, you know, uh, pressing needs to travel, either for study, either for uh, business or some other, you know, uh, important reasons. And waiting for three months, obviously, um, would be something difficult for a lot of them uh, to stomach. So people would look at creative, quicker ways of having access to their passports as and when they require it. And that is why I did mention earlier that we've got to be creative. Creativity means decentralizing, getting it down at the district level, using, I mean, look at some of the edifices that up and down the country. Take my district, for instance, Kumbungu. Beautiful district assembly edifice, you know, built in 2015, right? With enormous office space. I don't see why the Ministry of Foreign Affairs cannot leverage on the available, available office space mm. in Kumbungu or in Pando or elsewhere in the country and uh, have more machines in these places to provide service to Ghanaians who need them. Until that is actually done, we would still continue to um, grapple with this issue of uh, Goro boys and middlemen. I see. Ras, it's been a pleasure talking to you on this matter. All right. Yes, so with us here on the Pulse on the Join News Channel, uh, coming up next, we'll have a conversation on the 2024 presidential elections. Guess who's my guest? I'll tell you after the break. Please stay. Smile, hmm? Look lively, okay? Smile, smile. Is the money too small? A bad stomach ruins your day. Don't let it. Take Gastron, your most effective antacid, for the relief of symptoms of peptic ulcer, heartburn, gas pain, flatulence, and indigestion. Hey guys, what are you waiting for? Let's go, let's go. Mwah. Can you bring down that smile more? <laughs> Gastro, effective relief from stomach discomfort. Manufactured and distributed by NS Chemist Limited. This advertisement has been written and approved by the... Every day, people have money emergencies. Mom, I need my school fees. Emergency. Mom, it's your money emergency. Emergency, emergency. Catch it. Time your rent. Emergency. Now, there's a new emergency number in town. More money, more money. Dial star 770 hash for all your money emergencies and chop life. Dial star 770 hash for money Of water. That's so true. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntex again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty. Seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex tank. Are you strong? Are you tough?
And thanks for staying with us. Uh, we are your election headquarters, and we do know that in a little over a year, Ghanaians will go to the polls to select a new leader when President Akufado ends his tenure. One of the main faces, uh, of course, new ones that will be canvassing for your votes to lead the country is Dr. Sam Ankara, an independent candidate who's joining us now in studio to have a conversation on his bid to become president of the republic. Dr. Ankara, thank you for spending some time with us here on The Pulse. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to, to be speaking to you. And I know that it's been a very busy year for you and a busy week as well. But let's start off with how your campaign has been faring uh, so far, because ever since you announced, you've been hitting the grounds running, and many are wondering, what's the end game? Well, um, thanks for asking. The campaign has really picked up tremendous support. Um, Ghanaians have, are beginning to understand the need for an alternative. Prior to me jumping on the board to be an independent candidate, as you could see, it wasn't a fashionable thing. People didn't have any clue or believe if at any point in our history somebody independent can have the opportunity to run the country. But gradually and gradually, people are picking up the understanding of why there's a need for us to have an independent candidate devoid of any political color or symbols, mm. but bringing the best brains in the country on the table to think and plan and build this nation, which is so badly needed. Um, the economic condition speaks for itself. Everywhere I've been, people are going through some of the harshest economic conditions. And it's not just now. They've experienced it after government after government. One mediocre government passes another mediocre government. Mm. So this gives us an opportunity for our message to be, to be received. And I can tell you, tell you it's caught fire. Mm -hmm. And let's watch out for 2024. Indeed, uh, that's what many of us are on the lookout for. But Dr. Nkra, the fear is that you, you're coming rather late to the party, the party of having independent aspirants in our presidential elections. We've seen, you know, so many names. I just don't want to mention them. But why will Sam Ankara make a difference in, in the upcoming elections? I guess that's the biggest question facing you now as an independent candidate, because we've seen so many. I mean, it's time for everything. A few years ago, malaria was a death sentence. You have malaria and you're going to die. Now with a tablet, you can cure yourself or even protect yourself from getting malaria. Mm -hmm. The world has moved on. We've gotten to a time in our political history that we have no option than to look for alternative routes to build our country. The status quo is number one option. And I believe Ghanaians are beginning to understand the need for this change. Mm -hmm. Our systems have become dysfunctional. Systems that used to work before are not working anymore. We can't keep using analog to solve digital problems. We need to start looking at things from a different perspective mm -hmm. and see how best we can build, bring our brains on the table, build our nation. Because the MPP NDC status quo over the years had not changed I, anything. I get that. And that's why I'm asking the question as to why you should be the one changing that status quo now. When we've seen several names, a number of individuals come up, they all come up, we need a, 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 you know, a new phase, we need a new ideas, and yes, Ghanaians do not appreciate them. Do you feel Ghanaians will appreciate you? Absolutely. First of all, um, I have what it takes. And again, as I said earlier, now is the time. Mm. This is needed so badly in our political history. If we don't take the opportunity and change it now, it may come back and haunt us. As painful as it may be, mm -hmm. we need to take the decision, look for an alternative, as we get some anchor and the team of experts into the helm of affairs. Let's correct things, let's break down the system, let's rebuild and put structures that would work mm -hmm. and stand the test of time. Okay, you're giving the Republic of Ghana as a private entity now, you are the MD. Where would you start the change from? We need radical reforms. This is no more 2% uh, growth, 3% growth. We need radical reforms with the number of young people coming unemployed, both from the universities and those that are not in education. It's frightening. This is not a time to be sitting down and looking at, oh, let's change this policy. Let's call. It, there's no cost. But where will you start Number from? one. Sam Ankara has a vision for Ghana. Where will Number you start? Number one. Sam Ankara administration, mm -hmm. we would not export any raw material. The worst case scenario, semi-processed. We need to create jobs. We need to create value. I made a, this, uh, what do you call it? Um, I think I spoke to you about what happened in Norway after the Second World War, a country of fishermen and farmers. Mm -hmm. They had nothing. It was a poor country until they found gold. Sorry, oil. Right. Similar to what Ghana has. 
Now, Norway is not just exporting the product, they're exporting the technology. Everywhere in the world where you go to the oil fields, the experts on these fields are Norwegian. It's because it started from a leader that was transformative and mm -hmm. see beyond. They told the Americans and the British and all the experts that, hey, we are not going to allow you to take the resources and give us royalties or yeah. free carried interest as what others are doing. Mm -hmm. We want you to train and develop our people. Let's take care of our resources. Let us 100% wholly own it. And then we will pay you from the proceeds. And that decision has radically changed our country. Saudi Arabia has done mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. Ghana has been mining gold before colonial days. If a Ghanaian geologist signs on a competence report and he put in a stock exchange in London anywhere, they will throw it away in the bin. We have not trained any experts. We have not benefited from anywhere. Even where the gold is mined, look at the state of these places. No roads, no infrastructure, no drinking water. Look, we've got to be serious. So what would Let's you do, thinking. practically speaking, to change that? So I'm saying 100% ownership of our natural resources. Uh, that's almost like nationalizing the mines. It, no. It's not you know, an idea we would welcome in a day and age where we're just a minute part of the global trade So we have the chain. asset. It's going to be difficult for us as a no, country to we do we have that. the asset and we have the operating company. Mm -hmm. With the operating company, everybody else can buy into the big corporations, can buy into the operating company. But the asset is wholly 100% owned by Ghanaians. The operating company, but, but the data, they get a contract. I'm sorry, to, Dr. Ankara, the data would not back you now. Our minds heavily controlled by foreign companies. Do you intend to expropriate all of this? No, I mean, those that had gone are gone. We can't go back and change the law. So but then, the, but obviously, there are new opportunities coming. We just find lithium, and again, we've just thrown it away. 13% right. free carried interest, 10% royalties, the same, but the same old colonial yeah, so agreement. So it's all gone now. How do we it's not deal gone. with that? There are a lot more. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at the Ghanaian mob, luckily, we're blessed. So we need to look at the remaining resources cover it like uh, as much with our precious life mm -hmm. and protect it for the for the for our Ghanaians for now and also for the generations uh, coming after us right so 100 percent ownership for natural resources no raw materials get out of the, uh, the ports of this country i mean can you imagine you go out there in the bush cut timber put it in trails mm -hmm. destroy roads you've invested millions into mm -hmm. ship it abroad import it back at three thousand percent Increase in price. I mean, come on, look, let's be serious. Let's start thinking as a nation for ourselves. Let's start creating opportunities. Mm. Let's be selfless mm. and leave something for the generations to come. We are borrowing and mortgaging their future. Why are we not creating something for them? So it's about time we cut off all those things and start looking and making sure mm. that Ghanaian assets benefit Ghanaians. Again, look at the vast lands around us. Mm. Arable lands, fertile lands. You drink what you, you, you take an orange, you leave the, the, the seed there, it, it, it germinates the next day. Plantain everywhere, it's a fruit. The fertile is, so, is great, it's so rich. Mm. And yet, we are importing onions, mm -hmm. tomatoes. Mm. Come on, let's get into heavy mechanized farming. And again, I have a blueprint for that. We're going to get into heavy mechanized farming, feed ourselves, and feed our neighbors. Look, see how. be out with the EIU uh, predicting a possible win for the opposition National Democratic Congress. It's almost as though we're going back into that cycle. Well, you can't beat the NDC now, you agree? I'm, I'm beating the NDC hands down. Look, I've also done the polling. Again, mm -hmm. some of these things, I don't want to start talking about it. I don't believe in them. I have been at the length and breadth of this nation. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten Ghanaians you speak to would not touch MPP or NDC with a poll if the right things are being done, which we're following. So maybe our strategy hasn't gone down the let, ground let yet. Let me say that clearly. You, you doubt the EIU report and prediction well, that the opposition what, what, NDC what, what, might, I mean, might win. I, this not, is a scientific poll, uh, three or four times running correctly, understand, predicting understand. what might happen in terms of our you know, if, the, if you do the political pool, transition. The pool, obviously, is based on today's happening. Right. They haven't seen the outdoor of some Ankara's policy, the... Uh, it, the impact of the campaign that we're going to do because we're going to match them boot for boot, left for egg, arm for arm. We're going to go to the length and breadth of this country, logistics-wise. So 
We how haven't done that. How many parts of the country have you been in terms of region? So far, I've done a lot of work in the north, mm -hmm. the upper west, upper east, the north. I've done most part of the uh, OT region, uh, voter region. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, I've reserved Ashanti and Greater Accra from the 1st of uh, January's launch. That's the 13th of January when we outdoor our campaign. Okay. Those are the places we're going to spend I a lot see. more time I see you want, to, you want to eat deep into the governing NPP's uh, base in the Ashanti region. We'll talk about the strategy. But... All of these regions you've gone to, gone to, you're telling me that, first of all, if we ask all of the people you've met, none of them will be speaking about the NDC or the NPP. Are they speaking about you? Well, absolutely. They said we're looking for a credible, credible alternative. Mm -hmm. It looks like you're offering that to us. Look, I... Uh, uh, by, by, lady, what, by, what, by what measure, really? <laughs> well, let me come in there. An yes. old lady said something very, very sad and very touching as well to me when I was in the Damango area. He said, young man, I appreciate you taking the effort to come to this part of the world to campaign to us. But we haven't seen any po what policies have done for us over the years. You see that water there? Um, the wildlife comes and drink from it. Mm -hmm. The horses drink from it. The elephants. And the same water we're drinking. Mm -hmm. And since time immemorial, having government after government, this hasn't changed. Are you saying you can change this for us? As sad as the story was... These are the happenings around our nation. The last 30 years or 60 years of independence had not changed the lifestyle of Ghanaians. How long are we going to sit back and watch and keep doing the same old thing? Einstein says it so smartly years ago, generations ago, he's only an insane person that keeps doing the same old stuff and expecting a change. Unfortunately, we keep doing that, uh, voting for, you know, in the same parties as we've done uh, since uh, the fourth democratic dispensation. If we were to give a percentage in terms of projections that you're making for yourself, what's the target that you're seeking to upset this year's elections with? Uh, to be honest with you, the, the report that we have, and again, I've got to be very blunt and transparent about it, we're looking to get about 35% for the first round, and then maybe when we go on a second round, getting all the smaller parties to join us, we can cross the line mm. of 51, 51%. But again... A lot, a lot can change, mm. depending on what efforts and work that we put into. And we're being very, we're being very aggressive, and we're taking this serious, and we are going to the wire. Okay. The, the, the space you find yourself in now, you are an independent candidate, uh, almost as though you're pushing for a new force or a third force. We are the third. That, that the, conversation has come, come up. We are the alternative. Uh, it, the, is Ghana ripe for a new force, if we, if we should put, put Absolutely. it Absolutely. It's, it's the same as asking me, is Ghana ripe for having the right people to lead the country? We've gone on the same route where people are appointed on political merit, not on meritocracy or the skill that they bring on the table, and it's failed us. We are saying we want people with the right credentials, right qualifications to be fixed to run this nation. We can't afford to be doing political squabbles where I win and I bring my cabal to just come and run around, don't have the know-how, just do things and feed themselves and their families and then leave the government. And that's not what we need. We need people who are selfless, people who have these requisite skills, and people who have the ability to do this. And we are saying we are using Ghana as a whole pool of resources and talent, both women and abroad, to recruit and bring them on the ground to come and help build this nation, which is so badly needed. You're not the only one, you agree, uh, championing this um, you know, agenda of having a new force. You issued a statement a couple of days ago um, pointing out you know, your, your own reservations about a separate campaign, also championing this cause of a new force. And we've seen the billboards all over town. to say that I'm not working with this group of people. Why not join forces with these people? Our arms are widely open to anybody that wants to support, because at the end of the day, we're fighting the same fight. We want to end the Leo Kondolani's rule NDC MPP. Mm -hmm. So any group, wherever they are in Ghana, wherever, if, so far as they're Ghanaians, and they buy into that vision, our arms and are wholly open for these guys. Right. The only issue I had was... Again, people did not understand the symbolism of the mask. I wasn't trying to 
and bring down somebody's campaign. No. All I'm saying is, at this point in our uh, country, where Ghanaians are going through some of the harshest conditions as a result of masked promises, there's no masked promises going forward. Oh, so you agree to using the images, the graphic images of the men wearing the mask and promising well, that yeah, there'll, I mean, be, I, I mean, there'll it, be a new force. I, I buy into it. I said there's mm-hmm. no mass promises. We got to, Politicians should be able to be bold enough to come to the populace and say the conditions are not favorable. The situation is not the best for us. Mm-hmm. However, if we are able to buy the bullet and do ABC, it will yield us to this. Rather than flavoring stories and coming with a mask covering their faces, facade, political facades, Political corn artist, so to speak. This is not accepted in our politics. Okay, so so you were using that for a campaign messaging, if if we were to get that clearly. Yes. So you're using someone else's idea? No, 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 at all. I mean, yeah, but that's someone's uh, you know uh, intellectual property. They're they're sending out a message asking for Ghanaians to join the new force, and then Dr. Samankra comes, um, you know, appears from nowhere. Quote and unquote, steals this mask. Listen, I'm you use the mask for five minutes and then you take it off and say, I'm the one. I never use the mask. First of all, I never wore the mask and take it off. Let's get that out. Okay. But listen, mm. we've sat in this country and seen different things. Mm. I have seen M- NDC billboards yeah. where they are pushing the elephant into the bush. I, I have seen MPP's billboard where they use a the horn of the elephant to pull down the umbrella. Mm. It's called political comedy. It's accepted. It's very ethical and moral right mm. in everywhere we go. So, this is the beauty of democracy. We should be able to do that because at the end of the day, it's accepting views and opinions of everybody. The fact that you are working with me to achieve a goal that doesn't mean everything that you do is 100% perfect. I see. Do you know the one behind this mask? No, I'm not. Uh, so when you, of course, showed up, <laughs> everyone believed you. So we take it as though that you are the one really behind the mask? No, I'm not the one behind the mask. So how can I- you, do we trust you now? Trust me, 100%, mm-hmm. I am not the man behind the mask. Did you receive a call, uh, perhaps, from, from the force? And, and you know, w- what was the kind of reception you had from, you know, the originators of that? Of that uh, Honestly you know, speaking, I have, not re- I have not received any call from any force. And these are unseen faces. These are hidden hands. Mm-hmm. I mean, for the, the new force supposedly being advertised, not even a registered entity in anywhere in this country. So clearly, I, I, it's unseen. Huh? You've checked that already? I mean, I do that all this. Yes. Oh, I see. So the new force is not registered. Well, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, we haven't seen anywhere. So. The, 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 the graphic imagery we see, you do not have any idea who might be behind it? Absolutely not. And again, the mask is an African mask. It's a, it's a, it belongs to the Benin community in Nigeria. That's oh, really? And again, it's on also on a, it's AI generated. It's on a stockpile on the internet. Everybody can go there and access it. So there's no exclusivity, there's nothing at all to it. So anybody cannot lay claim on that, as far as that is concerned. But in any event, we're not fighting anybody. We want to end the status quo. We're telling Ghanaians that the status quo is no more an option. Well, NDC, MPP can't take this country to prosperity the, the force, because of our style that, of politics. That, that this new force is not happy with what you're doing. They've issued a statement. I believe you've read the statement calling you out and, you know, portraying you in a light that some would say is unprecedented. A president should not be going in for another person's manifesto. As, 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 exactly. But then again, like I said, I've explained to you but what... you've seen the statement. I've seen the statement. They've written to you no, also. N- nobody, no, ha- nobody has written to me. Mm-hmm. Somebody sat in a corner, uh, right? Who, who is this? I don't know. Right. Wrote something and then put on the internet just to, just to what do you call it, um, defame me. Obviously, because... To, you de- you de- now feel defamed? Well, I mean, the content of it. But when I came out right. and I did my, my press release as well to counter that, yes. again, nobody has responded. So let's wait and see who now unveiled himself to be behind the mask. Then we can take them on on that letter they released. Well, we can't believe them too. Well, you can't believe them. I don't know. But like I said, let's see who, who, yeah. who comes behind it. Are, are you interested in joining this new force? Some say you, you, you like the movement, you like the, the sort of suspense. The, the no, but I mean, we're, 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 building, we're building a and, new and force. If, if, but if you want to join a new force, why not meet the leadership? At least we've seen a face communicating I, I, I on behalf of this I have continuously said to you, yeah. there's no face behind this mask, this uh, billboards. Nobody is taking ownership, so who would you talk oh, and to? And that's why you went in for it? No, no, not necessarily that. I went on, on it, whether there was or there wasn't, we could have done what we did anyway. That's irrelevant. You're going to do it regardless? Of course, yes, regardless. But what I'm saying is, we're building a coalition mm-hmm. of all these small forces. 
we've agreed, had an agreement, the Ghana, Ghana First Coalition. We're talking to different groups mm -hmm. to all come together so that collectively we have the strength to unseat. And it's unseat. interesting that if you like the new force, you haven't reached out to them yet. If you're I keep repeatedly people. saying to you, there's no face behind the new force. Who are you have you tried that? You said you've, you've <laughs> researched. You know that this is not the registered group as you're claiming. You want me to go behind? You, you want me to go? And, and th that's your first claim, your initial claim that you've checked. These are not registered a registered group of people. Because when I got a when yeah. I saw the letter circulating, mm -hmm. I had to check and see who are behind it so right. I can take them on. But I couldn't find anything. Oh, you wanted to sue them? Well, no, well, I mean, I don't want to go to that far. Right. Like I said, in, in political space, some yeah. of these things could be allowed. Mm -hmm. But uh, my lawyers would advise going forward. But we want to make sure who are the ones behind these okay, so the statements. If I get that, you, you are also searching for those behind the Absolutely, mask. because I, I felt the very, as I said, defamed. They mm -hmm. talked, they made some very callous, irresponsible statements and uh, malicious accusations on, on, with unfounded grounds. So, obviously, if somebody's attacking you personally, you need to take it serious. And like I said, those accusations are not presidential. Have you watched the latest video of the, of the group uh, with a spokesperson coming out and mentioning her name, who she is, and what they stand for? You've seen that video? In fact, look, you've I, seen that video. I've sir. seen that video. Yes, but precisely. You know, you know That's what? a face. I, 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 I don't want to under uh, what do you call it, uh, um, value the questions you're asking, but there's more bread and butter issues Gadiel was listening to. Yeah, but you, if, you, if you, a Dutch, you, a Dutch it's lady, it's part of the politics. A, a, you were telling me it's part of the politics. Yeah, well, but, but a Dutch uh, lady yeah, comes and, in, and, and, comes in and, and says, makes some statements. Is that what you want us to use yeah, prime but, time but to you talk are, about? You're standing for, a, a, you know, the, the, the presidency. The presidency, as we all know it, uh, will need someone who will be candid in his opinion. And Absolutely. of course, uh, when you are in trouble, then we talk about the problems surrounding <laughs> you. So now you have a group. A group with a face on it, someone introducing herself. Not a Ghanaian. And you're questioning the citizenship. I don't know. That. I know because is this is, this is a, what do you call it? Uh, apparently, from my team search, is a is a is a what do you call it? reality TV uh, uh, TV uh, person from somewhere in Belgium or Holland, one of those European countries. So the new force is anti ghanaian <laughs> Again, it's not up to me to say. Let yeah, but at least decide. you see a face and you say that you've been engaging people and all we see is you, you don't seem to go to the right quarters, right, at least just to see if indeed you'll get the right people to speak to. Yeah, but like I said, I just told you that face I spoke on the, uh, on the video, mm -hmm. the search that we've done so far tells us who that person is. So, but like I said, look, let's discuss the bread and butter for these Ghani Ghanaians. Ghanaians need to hear more of our policies. Okay. One more issue before we talk about your policy, <laughs> and, and I'll be on this, because that in, in, in you know, the very last few days, that's been the controversy around um, you. The names we've heard, possibly about people who might, behind, might, might be behind this mask, one name has come up, and it appears that's a businessman. You know him. Who said? I, I, I've seen him. How do you know I know him? <laughs> <laughs> you know him too well, Doctor. How do you know I know him too well? And, and these names that I don't know heard, anyone. And, and these names that we've heard, of course. Uh, Are we going to sit here and speculate hold some, about some mask? Really? See. Yeah, but but you've heard the businessman's name, right? I haven't heard this any businessman. businessman who owns a very no, notable uh, infrastructure. I or don't know hotel any businessman on Osu or Oxford Street. No, I don't have no clue. This is a man whose name has come up a, a number of times. You've heard about the rumors too. Listen, I am saying Ghanaians need somebody who has the capability, the expertise, the skill, mm. the know-how, the history, the track record mm. to be able to run this nation. And sources say I'm putting this myself... gentleman is not happy with you and you know that too. Well, well, then he should tell me directly. I haven't, like I said, I, I mean, I've repeated. Yeah, but you've heard all of these things and that's why... I haven't heard you. anything. You right? are I telling see, me, I'm, I'm hearing for the very first time a about... a very well-informed person. You no, 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 no. I'm hearing, I'm hearing for the very first time that there's a gentleman somewhere who claims but ownership. But you that too, though. But if the gentleman claims ownership, and I think... That gentleman probably would know me too. So the best thing is... Yeah, but you know him too well too. Take the call and call Sam Ankara. And you do Sam Ankara. You don't hide on unseen, on, uh, what do you call it, unseen faces and send, doc, uh, what do you call it, press releases on the internet. I have shown myself. I said, it's me here. Mm -hmm. So anybody else out there thinks they are the one behind the mask, unveil yourself and talk to Sam Ankara. Dr. Ankara, before we move on, you want Cheddar to call you. Is that what you expect? Who is Cheddar? Okay, I see. You don't know him. <laughs> well, that's what you're telling us. Yeah. Okay, I see. Let's talk about your policies now, <laughs> but he'll get back on that, I'm sure. Uh, let's, let's talk about policies now. 
What do you intend to do in, in the first few days of uh, you know, taking up the um, role as, as president of the Republic, if indeed you're giving the opportunity? We've seen the 24-hour uh, economy by some political parties. Some others are promising digitization. What's going to be big on the table for you? For me, government size. Mm-hmm. Government size is too huge. We need to save money. A lot of our waste goes through uh, the government side. Corruption is basically at the peak of where it is because of the size of government. UK, a country of 65 million, has only um, 300,000 people in the government payroll. Ghana, a country of over just about 31 million, has over a million people on payroll. We have government institutions, state enterprises that are lying idle and yet fill the people who are paid monthly. We go to the capital markets, borrow money, and come and use the pay recurring expenditures, including salaries. Come on. Let's be serious here. Mm. Government size needs to be halved to be able to create the kind of prosperity that we have. But in doing so, we make room for the private sector to be able to absorb it. We have to offload, offload most of these SOEs that are set an idle into the private sector. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a private sector-driven economy that Samankra will be looking to I promote. 24-hour economy, I'm sure you've heard about that uh, policy plan. You, you've been in business for a long time. You, you know how these things work. Do we really need policy to drive it? Well, look, 24-hour economy on the surface, fantastic idea. Like many other pro- uh, policies that, right. that this country has pro- uh, projected or proposed. Mm. However, the implementation, how are we going to execute this? We live in a country where even in Accra, mm-hmm. the portions and the splashes of areas, we don't even have 24-hour water. Right. It rains and our lights go off. Our distribution lines are dead. The small wind blows, the lights goes off. Mm. We don't have 24-hour power or energy. Daytime, they are robbing people on our streets. People are wearing masks to rob petrol stations on daytime. Now you're using the mask again. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell, tell you is, <laughs> yeah. let's, we can't do this in isolation. Yeah. Again, it's just an announcement. Maybe when I see the detailed and elaborate rollout, I could buy myself in. But you feel it's an idea that... I can, think it's a fantastic exist. idea, but the ingredients that yeah. needs to make it happen and work is not, it's not, it's not on the grounds at the moment. And it will take you to change that? Absolutely. We are talking about the rule of law. We're talking about security. We're talking about making sure that we have, we, uh, we, we, monopol- uh, we de- demonopolize the, en- uh, the energy sector. ECG cannot play that monopoly. Right. They are not being up to task because they have exclusivity. If we bring other players in there to compete with them, we will see that people can get value for money. Same as Ghana Water. We want to, again, not monopolize it, make sure that people can come into and then participate and make sure that they create a competition and create value for money. Look, all these things need to be done. We're trying to build a private sector-driven economy for Ghanaians and a system that works. The, the political cost, unfortunately, is, is something that, you know, camps up for anyone who wants to be president single-handedly, uh, knowing that the political cost in this country is very, very high. Uh, CDD doing some research, pointing out that, of course, the list you should work with as a member of parliament, I believe, is somewhere around 400,000 U.S. dollars for uh, the presidency. The political cost shooting almost, I think, way beyond $90 million, right? Do you have this financial capacity to do all of these things just by yourself? When, in fact, we have established political parties that could be the vehicle to support you to do that? Well, first of all, as an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. before you make any business assessment or venture to get in, you sit back, you take a pen and paper, you draw, and you see what it costs to um, the uh, implementation is. If I hadn't done that, I probably wouldn't put my neck on the line. Then you look at a source of funding. If you don't have that, you don't have a business. So all these things have been heavily looked into, and that is why I can sit in front of you here today and say I'm contesting for the 2024 elections. What's the source of your funding? Very critical point. Private individuals, interested people that want to correct the state of affairs of this country. Again, we have, we, we're going to, as we go along, we're going to have an opportunity for any Ghanaian that buys into our vision to put the money where their mouth is. There are going to be different schemes of raising money, but we're 100% certain we'll be well covered 
to be able to compete. And it's also one of the fears for independent candidates that in that case you find people placing their bets on you because uh, they fund you, they get some kickbacks after you win. That's exactly what we're fighting against. Where before even some people be coming to power, they are incumbent. They've put themselves into situations mm -hmm. where when they come, they have to do certain things to other people to be able to um, float. We're not doing that. We're saying we're bringing unencumbered money, free of any encumbrances, come freehand, make decisions that would benefit and prosper Ghanaians. I see. If you're running the elections, you're going to come up against individuals who are considered as very experienced, politically speaking, because this will be your first attempt at the presidency. Uh, we've seen former President John Dramani Mahama do this over and over again. Uh, the vice president, at least, even if it's not contested for presidential elections, has been a running mate before, uh, which makes you the new kid on the block. What's your assessment of you know, the chances you hold against this individual, starting, for instance, with the vice president? He's still in power, seven vice president, controls quite a lot of influence. Then you have the former president to deal with and any other candidate that would join the race. I'm driving a Ferrari, and they are driving broken cars. The vehicles they are using are all broken. They've shown you over the years. Ghanaians have seen over the period, NDC, MPP cannot change their circumstances. So that makes me far ahead of them in the race. These two individuals? Absolutely. NDC, MPP, I mean, come on. Look at what we're going through. Do you think real people that have this real experience will look back and vote for an MPP party? And people haven't forgotten what Muhammad took us through. So these are people that have issues. So I'm saying they are driving broken cars. I'm driving a Ferrari, and I'm going ahead of them. I see. Uh, interesting points you're uh, raising. Uh, the aspect about some of the happenings now, policy measures that government is considering, the imports restriction and regulation has come up. Uh, I was just speaking to some of the business groups a while ago, uh, raising concerns about the policy itself. Do, we, do you feel that this is the right time to do this, or perhaps is there any alternative that you've been thinking through on this? I, I think, to be honest with you, it's a fantastic policy. By the time it is wrong, it has to be phased out. See, you need to have room to grade it out before eventually coming to stay. Mm. And I think to other current conditions, economic situations that we're facing, mm. to bring such a policy and want to place it right there yeah. is a challenge. I see. One more thing on the 2024 elections, uh, just before we wrap up, Dr. Ankara, the candidates you have. If Dr. Sam Ankara does not get a nod, you don't get to win the 2024 elections. Who else do you feel should be president? Dr. Sam Ankara. <laughs> I see. No one else. Dr. Sam Ankara. You have other options? Multi-party democracy? Dr. Samankra. I see. That shows how he, much he believes in himself. And, of course, uh, that's uh, Dr. Samankra speaking to us. Any final message to our viewers and those who are watching us now? Well, I'll just say um, I would like to ask my fellow Ghanaians to take time and understand the reason why someone like me would put himself on the altar of sacrifice. I probably had no need even to get into politics. I would have better have stayed in my private life and enjoyed my life on their own. But it gets to a point where somebody has to leave for others. And I believe it's fallen on us as a generation to leave for the next generation. And that is why I have put myself on the line, sacrificed myself, all the luxury and the things that I would have enjoyed to be in this frame of affairs. I would want Ghanaians to look at us seriously, understand the policies that we intend, the radical policies that we intend to bring into the country to change our country once and for all, and create an empire or create something worth for everybody else and not a few. Mm. And being your election headquarters, uh, Dr. Samankra will definitely uh, be back here in studio. This is just a precursor to many of the conversations that we'll be having. Uh, but the battle lines, as we know it, are now drawn for uh, the much-anticipated parliamentary primaries in the often constituencies of the governing New Patriotic Party. One seat to look out for is the Lejikuku area in the Greater Accra region. It's been an unpredictable seat since its inception and swing between two major political parties, I'm all aware of our political desk and our reports. Lejokoko constituency remains a seat to look out for because it does not keep an occupant for too long. Dr. Bernard Okoboy managed 
to break the eight for the MPP, but succumbed to defeat in 2020 against the NDC. He is once again considered a front runner in the upcoming race. But UK based businessman Collins Ni Ashiti Olenu says he means business. He has renounced his UK citizenship to join the race, insisting that the party's 2020 defeat in the constituency was avoidable. That defeat in 2020 was not something that any sympathizer of the MPP had hoped for in Legokoku. But unfortunately, it happened that way. But now the party has an opportunity to right the wrong. What he has to learn intends to bring on board is an empowered force of grassroots that have a better sense of belonging. And I believe um, that is what is very, very vital to, uh, to win the party the seat. Me, I still you know, having this at the back of my mind, I've already brought in, um, uh, has already brought in a great wealth of initiatives, um, which, which was in fact driven by my vision that I have in, uh, that, that, that I have put together in the phrase new face. Presidential staffer Ibrahim EJ, who believes in second chances, considers himself as the catalyst for change in the NP. I'm that agent of change, and that's what I want to do. I want to bring the opportunities that exist within government to the people of Legikuku so they can realize their ambitions. So far, I've managed by God's grace, Alhamdulillah, we've been able to allocate 300 jobs for the youth of Legikuku, and I believe strongly that the people of Legikuku recognize the talent that I have in job creation and also making sure that we connect with the people. Meanwhile, former constituency second vice chairman Clifford Marte Coley claims his popularity among the contestants makes him the right candidate to lead the NPP. I have not worked with them for a number of years to understand what will this election. I mean, what will bring all the people together to uh, forge forward to win elections for the NPP. Secondly, I'm the people that I'm the person that people want. I mean, they say that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Right now, when it comes to Tesha, they are making me the super duper. Everybody, everybody, everywhere across the divide is talking about the super duper. So, when it comes to popularity, I'm ahead of the people. Um, others have argued that if not for the primaries, we should all just go for these elections. And then, including all the NDC candidates and all the independent candidates, super duper will still take the seats. So first, the party person, the grassroots man, second, the popularity. Oh. The question remains, who will lead the NP? Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. In the 2024 general election in one of Ghana's most populated constituencies, delegates at the time have all the answers. From Lejokuku constituency here in Accra, Samuel Mbura, Joy News. And in the eastern region, a dedicated English teacher is not only supporting uh, transforming education at the Mampong Nkwanta MA school, but also spearheading a movement to address a uh, critical issue affecting girls' uh, attendance that's administration facing uh, resource challenges. Uh, Ejewa's uh, innovative approach of creating reusable parts has not only kept girls in schools, uh, but also uh, report some positive effects across 20 communities. Mami Esi Nyamija Thompson now reports. In the heart of the eastern regional town of Adoso, one teacher is spearheading a transformative movement, paving the way for a brighter future for girls at the Mampong Kwanta MA School. Meet Ejewa, an English teacher who nine years ago embarked on a journey that would redefine education in Adoso. 
I've been in this community for nine years. This is my this place is my first station to teach. So uh, when I when I got here, I saw a lot of challenges that the girls were going through. The Mampong Quanti School, a pillar of learning for over 60 years, has a population of 240 pupils, out of which 113 are girls. It is faced with structural and resource challenges, yet the commitment to nurture these students remains primary. Sanitary towel, the prices is going high. And even we, the workers, sometimes buying it, though we buy them, but we kind of, it's with some sort of pain, why should we be charged? Why should something that is natural, which is something that is part of a woman, why should we pay such a price? in maintaining ourselves as a woman. And I also realized that when you go to some of the communities, you will see a lot of girls, teenage girls being pregnant. And some of the reason is that they needed money for sanitary towels. However, headmaster Osei Isaac Nyeneku is also worried about the low attendance of some girls in the junior high school because of their menstrual cycle. Sometimes you go to the classroom, especially at junior high level, you see that most of the girls uh, aren't in school. You'll be asking why. Some of you tell you that they have finding pains in their abdominal pains and the rest. But close observation realize that some of them lack a lot of things. That is why they are not able to come to school. <laughs> Many of the school girls were getting pregnant in the bid to get sanitary pads. Because they couldn't afford it monthly, others resorted to odd jobs and missing school in the process. Pascaline's mother, a watcher seller in the school, is worried about the situation. Sanitary parts here are quite expensive and there's nothing we can do about it. And of course, uh, you can catch a playback of that uh, touching story on all of our Joy News uh, handles uh, on social media. Uh, but it's time to tell you about this because the Joy FM listeners promo is climaxing. And of course, programs manager Adam, uh, Adam Naite is uh, joining us in studio with uh, that big surprise that we have for you coming up. Adam, it's such a pleasure to have you in studio. I don't know, when you come anytime, I know there's good news. That's, that's the most exciting part of, I, of everything. I carry joy. So bring another joy onto the show this afternoon again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we've just been trying to say a very big thank you to our listeners. Right. You know, there are some who have really stuck with us, very loyal. They mm -hmm. are there. Some of them are even very silent, but we know they are always there for us. So we thought that, look, as we we're going into the festive season, why not? We should do something, come together with everybody and say thank you. It's just a saying thank you thank to you, them. Yeah. And so we got some partners, you know, okay. who are supporting us right. at Dancer Travels. They're going to give one person a full, like, an all-expense paid trip. But to I also Dubai. listen to Joy FM. Yeah. Are you working? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's good to be a listener now. <laughs> okay. okay, but it means you have to resign and become a listener. <laughs> and then we have the Maha Beach Resort. Mm -hmm. um, they are covered on board and they're giving, I mean, quite a number of uh, audiences, um, weekend stays, weekend mm -hmm. stay packages. Mm -hmm. I mean, with flights, Passion Air is helping us with that. Right. And then we also have... Um, the Mayflower Inn Hotel, also okay. given weekend packages, Labadi Beach Hotel, weekend right. packages and family so, packages. Mm -hmm. And now we have um, uh, Coco Crunch. They're giving us some hampers to also give, you away. Know, give away. And so we have lots of giveaways for our audience. So all this for one or for no. many? Mm -hmm. I mean, so we got lots of letters. Right. And then we had to bring it down mm -hmm. all the way. Now we mm -hmm. have up to about... Um, 10 of them, and so we're going to reward all the 10. However, they are going to vie, you okay. know, in a very fun competition. Mm, right. Who knows Joy better than mm -hmm. the other person? Right. And so the top person will get the, um, the Dubai, and then we, we, we do it that way. So this is happening on the 1st mm -hmm. of December, right. and that's Friday, Farmer's Day. We'll be at Hotel Cheche, East Legon.
Such a is T C H E T C H E. You can Another put it discovery in on the show just happened. <laughs> <laughs> you can put it in Google yeah. Map. Mm -hmm. It will bring you there straight. So, so we've gone past the, the selection. Yes, selection we've process, gone past right? the selection mm -hmm. stages. Yeah. You know, now we are actually like at the point where we are doing the rewards, and so that's happening on the first. From midday, the whole joy team. You have to be there too. The whole I'm joy there. team. It's not, it's, I don't have an option. I need to be there. So we that all when, have you, to be when there. you give all the goodies, I'm sure I'll find something. Exactly. Yeah. But most importantly, we want to yeah. spend time with our audience, bond with them, yeah. and be happy together. So that's what we are doing. That uh, you need to contact Ed and Naite now if you want to be in the good books, I'm sure. <laughs> but of course, we'll, we'll be doing that on your behalf right here. But Adam, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And of course, me. we'll be expecting you to also be a part of that program. And that's all we have for you in this package of the falls. Uh, log on to myjoyonline.com. We have updates there for you. It's been a pleasure spending some time with you. Bye-bye. Try it, especially my banana.